Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this brief Samurai Forms video, I'd like to talk to you about pickers, how to use them, what they do, and uh, how they are implemented within a Xamarin Forms cross-platform application. So as you can see in this generator page.xaml file, I have implemented two picker views, which are stored within a larger stack layout. The first picker um, basically has the picker items, in other words, the content of the picker, stored straight inside of uh, this XAML file in the element itself. So picker.items allows you to basically write in a whole bunch of different uh, strings, which do need to have the X, uh, X referring to up here at the top, the class of the page itself within the context of the greater application. Um, necessary for Xamarin Forms application. So you can't just port string, it needs to be x double dot string or x colon string. And that picker is going to be a drop down menu uh, where you can select from one of these three elements. And when one of those three elements is selected, it's going to populate the second picker with a different list based on what was chosen for one of these first three. So how this looks visually uh, inside of my fake log generator for Town of Salem application is uh, right here beneath game mode and character mode. These are pickers. They're drop-down menus. Uh, by default, it kind of puts the selection somewhere in the middle. Of course, you could customize that if you wanted to. But um, it's, yeah, <laughs> as I said, it's a drop-down menu. So you can choose rank slash all there. So once the game mode picker is selected, it's going to populate the character role picker with this list of additional information, uh, more specifically roles within the context of Town of Salem. Uh, but all this contains is a whole bunch of strings. Now for the second picker, as I mentioned, it's not being set manually by an initial picker.items. It's uh, being set rather by the on mode chosen, uh, the selected index changed. So whenever one of these gets selected, the selected index change event triggers. And if we go into my actual code, the .saml.cs, we'd be able to see this. On mode chosen. Um, now this is just a, a method that's specific to my picker right there, but hopefully this can give you a good idea of what you can do, what you can implement with your own pickers. It's uh, getting the original picker, the one that was chosen, uh, the one where the selection changed, setting that right there, getting the selected index, and then based on that selected index, it's going to put that into a switch statement. So, for instance, if position zero was selected, that means classic roles for Town of Salem, and uh, it's going to fill up the second picker with a whole bunch of strings. It's getting that from application.current.resources classic dot to list, uh, which is basically just a list of strings which I have stored elsewhere in my application. And yeah, it goes ahead and manually adds them all to the picker. I believe uh, a picker dot items is specifically a list of strings, so that's why it has you know the dot add method that's uh, specific to lists. Let's actually check that and I can confirm this. So yeah, these are all the methods that you would see in a list inside of C Sharp. So I'm pretty sure that's a list. And then as a final step, after filling in the second picker, it's just going to do some style changes so that the user knows which picker needs to be interacted with next, if at all, uh, by basically using these style resources that change the background color. So uh, the resources.classic, that's actually being pulled from the resource dictionary. Whenever you use resources and the name of a resource, it's referencing the X key of a resource dictionary item. Uh, likewise, case one, same idea, just it's adding in a different list of roles to the second picker. Uh, of course, as you can see up here, it clears the list beforehand. And the same thing with case two, vigilantics mode. It's possible I'd add more uh, of these to the app in the future, but that's the basic idea there. So regardless of whether you do it in code or your XAML file, in order for a picker to work properly, it's got to have the items component of the picker set, which contains a list of string elements. 
And really, that's all there is to Pickers at a base level. It has events you can trigger, uh, or basically have methods be called when they trigger, like selected index changed. You can set styles to it, just like any other view element. But that's really about it when it comes to Picker compared to all of the other view elements out there. I find it to be pretty useful. I've been using Pickers a lot. In any case, I hope you found this video helpful. I've been Chris. Thank you for watching. If you feel up to it, you can check out my app in the Android or uh, Windows Store. It's called Fake Log Generator for Town of Salem. Alternatively, feel free to check out my Patreon account if you want to toss a couple of shekels my way. And until my next video, I will see you then.